So to the next question is that you mentioned before, Mr. Anba, that there are values that doesn't change in the school, right? Even though the generations change, there are some values that does not change. What are the actually core values that the school holds? Values, I think, first of all, is integrity, honesty, integrity, making sure whatever you learn, you, you know, you are tested properly. And also, of course, is standards, you know, you, you don't lower your standards, those values that make sure that the standards are not lowered. The standards are at the level, for example, if it's IGCSE, it's at an IGCSE level. So there's an integrity towards the curriculum, integrity towards teaching and learning. And then I think the values of honesty, the values of compassion, empathy, these things are helping your, uh, your fellow peers who are not doing so well. So, uh, and also I think collaborative learning. Too. So these values will not change in any, in most environments, you know, uh, to, be, to be competitive, but also to be, at the same time, you know, some people say education system is paradoxical because you ask people to compete by asking you people to collaborate. It's always a balance, right? Mm. So, uh, so it's collaboration is about helping each other. Competition, competition is a healthy competition about you know different students doing well. So, it's about helping students to fit into society, to reflect the values of society, and to be good citizens and to be good uh, human beings and all that sort of stuff. So, I think those values will not change uh, irrespectively. Formal schooling, that is one of the parts of formal schooling to, to make sure that we infuse these values into the students. So yeah, this is going to be a, uh, the most important thing. So the, the values that you talk about is actually more of the social values. Yeah, social values and also educational values and educational values of making sure it's excellence. We don't lose, lower the students of excellence, you know, just because everybody is failing, we reduce the mark. Then after that, we, we will we'll end up with uh, low standard low standard doctors or lawyers or scientists or researchers or entrepreneurs. So, so the values is not only social, the values is also academic. Academic standard is also, uh, you know, we don't lower it just because, you know, it's a pandemic, you know, we, we make sure we teach to the level that is needed. So it's not only social values, it's also emotional values, it's about also the academic standards. So those values will not change. So the expectation of a good teacher, just because we're in a pandemic online, doesn't mean the teacher says, oh, it's a pandemic, I, I, don't, I can't teach properly. No, it's not like that. I think it's mm -hmm. about maintaining your professionalism. Those values will not change. We try our best to make sure those values are uh, adhered to. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Anba. For teachers then, uh, I would like to ask Mr. Gandhi and Ms. Nara about these values that uh, Mr. Anba just mentioned. How, how have you tried to um, deliver this to the students so that even outside school, they still hold this value. In class, I always say to a student that knowledge is power, but character is more. Maybe smart student or genius student, they have also lack in, in a value. So especially, it is important for a teacher and also for parents, not only supply about best education, a formal education, but also about their character and how to transmit or how to uh, deliver it to them. In class, uh, sometimes I said that, yeah, this is good value. Example, honesty. Uh, please don't chat. Even character is who you are when you are alone. Example, when you when student work about their worksheet and also exam, even though I'm not observe and know what in front of them, yeah, maybe there is a laptop or there is tablet or uh, using handphone, but I give uh, underline that character is very important and it will make you to become useful or to give impact to society. To become smart student, to become genius student is not enough. Uh, we create it as a social aspect also, yeah? not only personal, but must have impact also to our society, civilization, and something like that. So I guess uh, rather than just teaching them subjects that like physics and maths, as the teacher, you also engage yourself as a human being like to teach them about the norms. Yeah. Example, when I ask them to, to do me, example, from number one until number two, and while in the spare time, uh, I also said about this value because this is important. What Nelson Mandela said, uh, the best weapon to change the nation is through education. And education, not only about physics, about math, but also about character, right? Very nice. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Gandhi. Okay, yeah. Mr. Ra, what are the challenges that you face with these values that Mr. Anbar and 
Mr. Gandhi talk about and how did you overcome it? Personally, what I want the students to realize, I want them to picture out the big picture later on. Now, they do all the means to pass this exam, to cheat like that. That's just the like uh, the short term or the the near future, right? But what I want them to realize is how they will use this in the real world. Uh, I think if they could relate what they're doing now to how it will be applied later on when they uh, are adults in the real world, then they could appreciate more. Uh, they could strive more to, um, let's say, for cheating. They will strive more to be honest. Uh, for example, before, when I was a student, I was really happy whenever my electromagnetism teacher is absent. <laughs> uh, the whole class would rejoice. But I learned the hard way. Actually, I needed that skill. I needed that lesson for what I'm doing now. Mm. I learned the hard way. So now um, I had to, before I had to yeah, go over the lesson like that. So um, I guess showing the children how they would apply the things they learned today mm. to the real world, okay? When they, when they get released into the real world. And it's better uh, like modeling like that. Would you want to learn the hard way? Or although not all experiences are the same, but yeah, just to inspire them. Okay? My experience would be different from theirs, right? But sometimes I try to tell them like I've experienced this so would you want to learn the hard way and regret that later on or get the the insight the knowledge what I've learned or from what the other teachers have, uh, have learned before but also I'm making it clear to them that this is just like one situation or what there's still other other pictures that could happen but in short okay just how they would apply this later on in the real world to make them appreciate it more and if those values are instilled with them, then even without guiding them or even not really mentioning, you should not cheat, you should not cheat, you should not cheat, they themselves would decide not to cheat because they would realize it will help me later on. Okay. Like that. That's very nice. Thank you so much, Miss Nara. So we have actually a question here on the chat again. Uh, with online learning, how many students cheat during exam? So this is actually validating the values that we just talked about, being honest, et cetera, et cetera. How do you solve this problem? Maybe I would like to ask Ms. Nara again. But you said earlier, you just you just mentioned that you try to talk the kids out of the cheating. But have you also heard how many, how often do you hear this problem amongst your students that they cheat during online examinations, especially? I don't want to generalize or I don't want to accuse my students like that. But there are instances that you would notice like in class, the real-time response from the student, you would feel that, ah, okay, this kid still is still lacking in this part. But miraculously, <laughs> during the <laughs> test in the exam, whoa, I'm happy for them that they had a good, uh, a good, sure. a good result. But uh, in the back of my mind, uh, there's, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But uh, yeah, in the back of my mind, hmm, this is not what I experienced personally with this kid. So mm. there really is a, um, a high possibility that, yeah, cheating happened like that. Mm. Mm. Yes, but of course, not all of them. Mm. We, we should not generalize that everyone Yeah, yeah, of course, we cannot, we cannot generalize. But it did, I think it did happen. Even the parents mm. also, I think, acknowledged that. Um, Mr. Gandhi, have you experienced uh, your students? Because some students, even they tell their teachers straightforward, I cheat on the exam earlier. I think some students did that. So uh, this is also a phenomena, yeah, uh, because with Zoom online, since to cheating, I think greater. But I'm not uh, accuse them. Gitu. I make anticipation at college, yeah. They must also have many perspective camera, so when they fulfill the questions, make sure they do by their effort, not by cheating. Also make. Uh, analysis questions that mm. using critical thinking but for ad hoc i think this is a problem also because sometimes i think using measurable outcome i make average or this is increase or decrease so i cannot accuse them miss mm. because rule of ad hoc and also rule at formal sure. school also yeah. different also kan? are you must using 
many uh, camera from uh, in front and from other side so to make so, sure that you you do by yourself. Thank you, Mr. Gani. So, yeah. uh, as we heard from the teachers themselves, that from Miss Nara's way, how to overcome this the student cheating is by telling them when you want to get a good score by cheating, you will learn the hard way that you're not really actually learning, right, Miss? You will you you relate what they are studying right now to the real life situation so that they understand that they themselves need to learn about this and not to cheat. While Mr. Gandhi here also guiding the students to answer more critical questions so that this will lessen or actually you will know more about the students if they do understand it or they need more time to understand. Therefore, also uh, trying to lessen the probability of cheating. Now, for Mr. Anba, what has the school maybe do or overcome of the students cheating during the, their exams? How, how do you solve this problem? First of all, I think this now you said something about students openly saying that they cheated. So you must congratulate them for being honest, yeah? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so quite paradoxical, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. So, okay. Now, the school's way is that, look, the, first of all, we need to acknowledge one. We, the first acknowledgement we have to make is this. In an online assessment, it is impossible to have 100% knowledge that the ex examination is done with full integrity and security. It, it, is, it is impossible, yeah? Mm -hmm. If the student really wants to cheat, he or she can cheat. Because if you do multiple cameras and all that, we, we don't have the, some, some families don't have the, the resources and the school also cannot provide the resources. We can, we can look and we can see and let's say for, and different subjects have different ways. Certain subjects you can cheat, like multiple choice questions, you can cheat faster, you can, and you can go to the internet, you can have your handphone and all that, check the information. So different subjects got different range of how much you can cheat. Yeah? For, for example, an essay question, it's, it is highly unlikely to cheat, but maybe you have some information in your wall or whatever, which nobody can see and all that sort of stuff. So that I think is the first acknowledgement that we cannot have 100%. That is why we need to have assessments back in there. Or if you want to do one online assessments that are not cheating and all that, there's different, it's different strategies, yeah? So for example, another way is to talk to parents and ensure to parents, look, we have to make sure that this is a test and parents need to cooperate with schools in terms of, you know, making sure your children do it. For example, one of the school, my school was doing the primary six Cambridge checkpoint. And, we, and this year, the Cambridge checkpoint was done online and we got the cooperation. We sent the letters out to the parents. So we put it in um, envelopes. We send it to the children. You know, it was a big logistical task, mm -hmm. which was done by our group uh, of uh, the assessment uh, unit and with the teachers and the uh, heads of department. So, and the students had to open the envelope and then do the test and then seal it back and send it. Now, in that whole process, they could have been cheating. Not all, but... But it cannot be done, that cheating cannot be done without someone at home helping that child, right? Mm -hmm. So in this cheating process, it's interesting. The parent has got to take the value. If the parent is helping or abetting the student to cheat, then what can the school do? So the values, as, as all values come from the home. So this is right. one important thing. So we, we have limitations in what we can do. I'm not going to come here and say, oh, we have a technological solution for all that. No, this, at the end of the day, it's human beings. Human beings want to cheat, they want to cheat. And this is the best time, if, if, I'm a, if I'm a parent, this is the best time to teach my children a lot of good value. So that is one way. Now, there are other ways in which you look at it and you can put rules, you can have, you look at eye movement. Now, for example, like Mr. Gandhi or Ms. Nara, if the student does very well in your test and, you know, um, you suspect that the student, now, you, you don't have to accuse the student. What you can do is you can have after a while, the next two lessons, okay, you can say, okay, look, I'm going to have a random check on certain, on a sum. Let's say you say, okay, come right now. Uh, all right, guys, can you now take over this lesson and explain how this problem is solved? And you get the student to explain. Now, if the student had cheated, he or she would not be able to explain the steps and the procedure. So that is one way. And then you, after, if the child is struggling to ex explain it, then you can go offline have one to one and say, hey, look, you did, you got this test. And then, you know, you don't have to accuse the child. The strategy is very simple. Let the child know that you know that the child cheated. 
and and let him handle let he or she handle it from there and then take it from there and then have a word with the parents but don't accuse him there are different subtle strategies that you can use now online cheating if it's a huge problem everybody then there's no point of schooling but i think the problem is contained most parents are sensible rational and good people and they want their children to go become so i think it's not a huge many students do it i think it's a few students who do it and the few students give a bad name and the few students are supported maybe by the parents or they are so ingenious their parents don't know it or the parents don't care most of the time the parents might not be caring that's all so so i think this issue is as i said there are many strategies to know whether the student learn or not right so if you suspect then you can find different strategies to know how the students have learned as i said it is very very difficult to check 100% if you have a real examination come on even in uh, in face to face learning examination some students do cheat we catch them and sometimes we don't catch them because sometimes the teacher miss out or something like that uh, it's a different problem in a different scenario but i think we just need to be vigilant and we can catch them and all that sort of stuff but i think it's it is a problem yes but i don't think it's a huge problem as what people make out i think it can be solved there are ways to solve it and i think online and and because of that doesn't mean we don't have online assessments come on we have to have some form of assessments right but what we can do this is for me i take it as an advantage that this is a good time for parents and for school to make sure that we instill these values this is the best time actually for parents to be engaging yeah that's my my point of view i hope that answers the question Thank you so much Mr. Amba. So I guess what Mr. Amba just tell us it's more of a note for the parents and the teachers then yeah to actually to really understand especially for parents to also know how much your kids understand at school. I just saw one comment on the chat and and I fully yeah. agree with that. Yes, the application question in the university at a higher level is very hard to cheat. When yeah. you go the higher you go you know there's even oh. if I, if if let's say if you're going to IGCSE you want to cheat for a question it takes you another half an hour to learn and read that lesson how to cheat it <laughs> so if you go to internet you don't have enough time so it's one hour if one mcq question because it's an application question it's going to take you a long time for you to cheat so you're going to waste time time cheating so that's a very good way that's how they actually do a lot of application where the higher you go in the, in your education it's the online testing you is very because the time is less but knowledge based question true or false and all that yes you can cheat at the lower maybe primary 4 primary 5 primary 6 level now primary 6 maths and all that, if you use the mypels book i think uh, if you're doing a, a mypels book uh, maths I, and you're going to do a model 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 methods i i doubt you can cheat yeah. <laughs> unless unless you're collaborating with your friend yeah. uh, and that and that you need technology wow your friend is what wow. that, that means i would i would really give the ch- children Uh, a high mark for creativity yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. very interesting yes 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 thank you so much for samba this also uh, uh go to the next question that i want to ask actually how much influence do you think does the family support has toward a child's learning process besides maybe the one that you just mentioned earlier yeah, i think i think is one you look at all schools in all education research they have done Uh, successful st- uh, students over the many years the, over the different generations the number one point that comes is not schools or universities or teachers the number one point that comes up in all research studies about successful students is the family support not the environment per se you know when we say environment some people say oh you know divorced parents single parents uh, and all that sort of stuff is not there are there are many single mothers the students have been very successful single mothers you know because the single mother has given a family environment which is conducive supportive and all that sort of it's not only rich or poor background some some poor social economic background because the the parents have given that environment of studying has also helped not of course i'm not saying that the poorer students do 100% well the economic factors do play a part but it has has come so family support is 100% across cultures across nations has been the number one point in how students are successful not only in examinations but in how they learn their values they 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 they, they become successful in that sense when i say successful not only examinations yeah they yeah. go on to be successful in their workplaces and all that so that's the number one 
that of course all, across all research that I've read so far has said that is the number one point. Thank you so much, Mr. Anba. Maybe for the teachers, if you guys actually have any questions to Mr. Anba regarding maybe the challenges that you're facing in your day-to-day -day teaching. Can I just uh, add a point here that sure, I think, uh, uh, yes, HOTS is a tuition uh, center and a tutorial center and a learning center. But I do think that, I mean, of course, I, I know Miss Susie and she's done a great job for many years and she's wonderful in, in, in uh, helping the students. But I think one important thing is the social and emotional health of many students. Now, sometimes in schools, uh, because we are dealing with many students, sometimes I do find in my, this past 15 months, is that some of the form teachers or some of them, you know, the quiet students, we miss out on them. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how they're doing in mental health. Now, I'll give you one example. We got a message from one of the, uh, teachers who was actually in a tuition center mm -hmm. who gave us some good uh, insight about how the child was struggling uh, and the child was uh, doing some writing and you know maybe have some mental health issues or emotional issues now this was a very good collaboration of a tutor tuition center or a tutorial agency that was helping us as a school to help the parents and also to tell us about it because the parents were overseas or in, in different places so they, they, they alerted to us. So that also can be very useful. So not only in these online agencies, do you just, just teach the content? Yeah? People normally make a mistake. Of, you are also teachers and you also have to look after the uh, social, emotional well-being of the students because you can understand. You, can, you are the first people to look, know them and to detect them. So if you detect any differences or anything like that, and especially in this pandemic age, it's very important. Young people are you know, especially the teenagers, they're going through a difficult time, yeah? And so maybe it is a good time. And I think this is a role that you guys can uh, play to help schools, to help parents, to help the children, to help them in their mental health. And all. I'm, I'm not saying that you, you, produce, you do the counseling or you do the help, but at least you refer and inform the parents that you detect this behavioral change, you detect some problems so that the parents are aware and then the parents can contact the schools, then we can work together. That, in my experience, I think I've seen in a few students and, and, and people like uh, Miss Susie and all that who are very responsible, who are just not only interested in teaching students English, maths and science, but also in helping the students uh, have good emotional skills and to have proper skills to, to, be, to be fully functional citizens. I think that's a very important thing. I, guys, I think you guys also need to consider. Yeah. Sorry, that's my uh, additional mm -hmm. thought. Understood. Thank you, Sir Anba. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Anba. Um, basically, working hand-in-hand -hand with the parents as yeah. well. And I think, yeah, the ways that Miss Susie runs her tuition center is like in, in line with what Mr. Anba said. When the teachers detect something with the kids, uh, Miss Susie provides a good uh, communication path between the teachers and the parents and the students, even the school. So, uh, and I guess, yeah. And it's yeah, that's true, Mr. Anba, because um, when the students, they feel so overwhelmed at school, they tend to really share share what they feel with us. So it's also a very realistic example. Yeah, thank you also for the advice, sir.